good day students today we are going to talk about the structure of the nucleus and in the previous lecture we have discussed or we have divided the cell into three parts for the ease of study of the structure that is the cell membrane or the cell wall then the nucleus and the third part is the cytoplasm so today we are going to talk about the nucleus so nucleus was discovered first of all by robert brown in 1831 nucleus can also be called as the head headquarter of the cell or the controlling center of the cell because it control all the processes taking place in the cell as well as it is the unit which controls the heredity that is transmission of characters from one generation to the other so it is aptly called as the headquarter of the cell as we know that the eukaryotes all the eukaryotic cells have a well defined nucleus and therefore they are called as eukaryotes that is true nucleus whereas in case of prokaryotes they lack a well defined nucleus so what they have where do where do they contain their genetic material they contain their genetic material in the center of the cell in the form of a nucleoid or a genophore they lack a well defined nucleus so we can say that the prokaryotes have a primitive type of nucleus therefore they are called as the prokaryotes pro means primitive karyon means nucleus and this primitive nucleus is called as the nucleoid or the genophore and if we talk about the eukaryotes as you all know they have well defined nucleus but there are some exceptions in the case of eukaryotic cell also like the red blood cell the red blood cell that is the mature red blood cell of a mammal lacks the uh, nucleus so we can say generally although there are certain cases where the rbc or the red blood cell or the erythrocyte contains the nucleus but generally we can say in the case of mammals the mature red blood cells lacks the nucleus rbc means red blood cells or the erythrocytes now the structure of nucleus structurally the nucleus can be divided into four parts what are these four parts we will discuss them one by one so the first part of the nucleus is the nuclear membrane or the nuclear envelope this nuclear membrane is also known as the karyotheca that is karyotheca now the second part of the nucleus the second part of the nucleus is the nuclear sap or the nucleoplasm which is the fluid portion present inside the nucleus and it is also known as the karyolim the third part of the nucleus is the nucleolus nucleolus is the membrane less that is without membrane structure which is present inside the nucleus and nucleolus was discovered by fontana the discoverer of the nucleolus is fontana 
So we can say about the nucleolus that nucleolus is without any membrane that is it is not enclosed within any membrane although it is present inside the nucleus. And secondly about the function of what is the function of nucleolus? The function of nucleolus is the synthesis of rRNA which is involved in the synthesis of the other organelle that is called as the ribosome. So this part of the nucleus is exclusively involved in the synthesis of the rRNA and ribosome. rRNA is a type of RNA which makes up the ribosomes. You must be knowing about the full form of RNA. RNA stands for ribose nucleic acid and rRNA means the ribosomal RNA that is which is involved in the synthesis of the ribosomes. Now the last part of the nucleus is the chromatin material or the chromatin network. This chromatin material or the network appear in the form of a thread which remain intermingled among themselves and when the cell starts dividing or when then it prepares to divide these thread chromatin threads condense to form the chromosomes which can be seen at the time of cell division during the metaphase stage. So now coming back to the chromatin material which is a network of thread like structures and this network or this thread like structure is made up of the ribonucleoproteins that is the chromatin material can be also called as the nucleoprotein and this nucleoprotein means the nucleic acid plus the protein part. So we can say that this chromatin material comprises of two parts that is the nucleic acid part plus the protein parts which are basic in nature like the histone proteins. So we can say chromatin material consists of two parts which are present in equal proportion that is the nucleic acid and the basic proteins. Now coming to the nucleic acid. This nucleic acid of the chromatin material is of two types that is the DNA and the RNA. As I told you earlier the full form of RNA is ribose nucleic acid. And the DNA stands for deoxyribose nucleic acid. So, I am repeating again that the chromatin mat material or the chromatin network, which is a thread like structure, is basically a nucleoprotein which comprises of the nucleic acid and the basic proteins in equal proportion. And these nucleic acids are of two types that is DNA and RNA. So we can say that the chromatin net material is made up of DNA, small amount of RNA and the basic proteins like the histones. Now the RNA is further of three types that is mRNA represented by small m. Small m stands for the messenger RNA. The second type is rRNA that is small r RNA where the small r stands for the ribosomal because it is the main constituent of the ribosome. And the last part is the tRNA that is represented by small t RNA where the small t stands for transfer. These different types, three different types of RNA are 
categorized on the basis of their functions. We are not going into that detail, that is what is their functions. So this is a brief discussion about the types of nucleic acid and these nucleic acid makes up the chromatin material along with the basic proteins. Now the diagram of the nucleus. If we see it diagrammatically, the nucleus is roughly spherical in structure although there are other structures also like it can be dumbbell shaped, it can be multi lobe, it can be like trilobe, bilobe, dumbbell shaped, kidney shaped. So there are varieties of shapes but here we are going to discuss the spherical shape of the nucleus. As I have told you that the nucleus is surrounded by a double membrane layer and these double membrane and this double membrane is not continuous throughout it is interrupted at places by the openings or pores which are called as the nuclear pore and these nuclear pores are very essential for the uh, entry and exit of materials inside and outside the nucleus so these pores provide the site for exchange of material between the nucleus and the cytoplasm. Also it should be noted down that the nuclear membrane is continuous with the endoplasmic reticulum. That is the rough endoplasmic reticulum. As we all know that the rough endoplasmic reticulum means the endoplasmic reticulum membrane contains the ribosome on its surface which makes its appearance rough and these ribosomes we will discuss in later on also that are mainly involved in the synthesis of the proteins. This is the outer membrane of the nucleus. And this is the inner membrane of the nucleus. And together these two comprise the nuclear envelope or the carothecia. You can also see that the nuclear membrane is continuous with the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And at places, this nuclear envelope is interrupted by the pores, which are called as the nuclear pores. Now, after the nuclear envelope, the next part is the nucleoplasm or the nuclear sap, which is the fluid portion present inside the nucleus. So, this is the nucleus sap or the nucleoplasm. Now inside the nucleus is present is, a, is the membraneless structure called as the nucleolus which is roughly rounded or spherical in the appearance. Now the fourth part of the nucleus is the chromatin material or the chromatin network. And this chromatin network or the thread like network is basically divided into two parts the heterochromatin and the euchromatin. This euchromatin can be called as a true chromatin network that it's structurally it is more open thread like structures structure which uh, contain genes which express more oftenly. That is, uh, this chromatin network contains those genes which are required to express more for the survival of the cell. The second part is the heterochromatin. Heterochromatin is the second part or type of the chromatin network, and this heterochromatin is structurally more condensed form of 
chromatin thread and it is expressed less that is it is transcriptionally inactive because the genes present in this part of the uh, chromosome are expressed less. Inside the nucleolus also there is some part of uh, chromatin network is present that is the called as the intranucleolar heterochromatin. That is the heterochromatin part present inside the nucleolus. Just near outside the nucleolus is also present the heterochromatin and it is called as the perinucleolar heterochromatin. So this classification of euchromatin and heterochromatin is just on the basis of their structure that is how condensed or open thread these are and whether they are expressing or not. So this is the structure of the nucleus. Now coming to the functions of the nucleus. Nucleus is of prime importance to a cell and therefore it is called as the headquarter of the cell. And the functions of the nucleus can be divided into three parts. The first function of the nucleus is that it controls all the metabolic activities of the cell. Secondly, it also regulates the cell cycle. Now what is the cell cycle? Cell cycle is an organized or predetermined sequence of events through which a cell passes. That is when the cell will divide, when it will get into the rest stage or stationary stage, when it will not divide. So all these aspects are also controlled by the nucleus of the cell, that is the cell cycle. And the third most important function of the nucleus is the it is the hereditary it contains the hereditary material that is it helps in transmission of characters from one generation to other So this is all about the nucleus. In the next part, we will be talking about the cytoplasm.